Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the 2023 Chevrolet Equinox small to mid-size crossover. And for many of you, it may get kind of lost in the mix, but this vehicle has a couple of features that really impressed me. And in this video, we're gonna do a complete in-depth review, especially on the interior things, showing you some things that the other videos don't show you to help you decide if this is the best vehicle for you. So first of all, I am filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals in Fredericton, New Brunswick. This is one of many vehicles that I get complete access to. So if you have questions about this vehicle or any vehicle in its class, make sure you let me know in the comments below and subscribe because I'll continue to make more videos on this and other vehicles in the class. And if you need comparisons or other things, we can talk about that and put them on video as well. And my whole goal is to make sure that you have a video database of all the information you need. And if you need to, if you're in Fredericton area and you're looking to buy a vehicle, swing by Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. They're known as Canada's huggable car dealer. They will take care of you. And the best part is if you're looking in this class, you should probably be comparing it to other vehicles in its class. And you can do that all on one lot here. There's all kinds of SUVs here to compare this to. But like I said, this one has kind of impressed me in ways that I didn't expect. So let's talk about that right now. So if you're like me, you may decide that the Equinox doesn't really have groundbreaking styling. I think that's a fair assessment and GM is kind of doing the GM thing with this. They're adding some trim, they're making this sort of their blacked out trim. You've got blacked out wheels, blacked out logos, blacked out just about everything. And that's kind of what GM does when they're sort of in that mid range, not a brand new model, but nothing else. And you know, this is often a vehicle that can become overlooked, especially even on, the G on GM's own lot. You just see a lot of vehicles that have that similar design trend. But what GM does very, very well is the details. So exterior details, you can decide for yourself if this is what works for you. Underneath the hood is a 1.5 liter turbo. That is becoming class competitive. Uh, it seems like a very small engine for a vehicle like this. They used to have uh, larger V6s, but what you're finding now is that the segment who buys this Fuel efficiency matters. If you want you know, heavy duty towing, you move to a bigger uh, vehicle. And this is very class competitive power. And that 1.5 turbo, despite the fact that it's you know, only one third bigger than my motorcycle engine or my motorcycle engine plus another half of my motorcycle engine, uh, as far as displacement, is plenty powerful to do what this vehicle needs to do, which is get your family around with all wheel drive in all weather conditions, do road trips, that kind of thing. And of course that 1.5 turbo, when you stay out of the turbo areas, that gives you great efficiency, which means as you're just doing your normal drive down the highway or even in through town, it gets you pretty good efficiency. And that's why they're moving to these smaller engines. That to some people will be the story of this car, but that's not my story. Let's check out the uh, trunk, rear seat. And then when we get in the driver's environment, we're gonna really start focusing on a lot of those details that I think make this really enjoyable and a very good vehicle to consider in the class. Let's start with the trunk. All right, you're buying a small crossover because you want a little bit of space. Let's just show you the key first. Usually I show this a little later in the video, but we're gonna double tap this button right here in the center, which is, or near the center, which is your trunk. You also have remote start, unlock and lock. Let's double tap that right now. As we do that, you can see it is a power operated trunk, which is again, not in every vehicle in this class, but it's class competitive here. You do have some underfloor storage. We're gonna show you that in a bit. We also have a tire below that. And generally you have a very large space, but let's start taking a look at some of those features that again, maybe you're not seeing in every video. So when you look at a trunk, you gotta secure your cargo. You do have tie downs over here. You do not have tie downs on the front of the floor. Now that's not as much of a concern when you have the child latch positions. Not every SUV has the full three latch positions. So if you're putting child, child seats in there, left side, center, or right side works just fine. Over here, you do have that underfloor storage. And again, underneath there is the um, spare tire as well. So that's always good, especially in an open vehicle. If you're going to the gym or have smelly or dirty clothes, you can throw your smelly clothes underneath there, seal this down, and that'll prevent some of that smell coming out. There is a place to mount a cargo net across the back here. That would be in a GM accessory. There's also a place to mount a re, uh, retractable cover here. Sometimes on certain vehicles that is not included in the bodywork. You have to upgrade to a different thing. So you can buy that as a GM accessory to have a little extra privacy cover there if you want. What I like is these seats are a long reach forward for some people. I'm about six feet tall and can just kind of barely reach them. You can fold them down with these two handles here. You've got a 12 volt plug down there as well. It's a fully equipped trunk and that's what you want in addition to just cargo volume, which this car is very good for cargo volume. Let's check the back seat and then move to the front seat. 
All right, as we head towards the back seat, let's just point out one more thing up here. You do have a very large roof rack. Sometimes the roof racks start well behind the uh, driver's door. Now there are fixed points in that roof rack to have the crossbars mount if you go with the factory crossbars. But generally speaking, when you have these rails, you can get aftermarket crossbars from Yakima or Thule or something like that and mount everything you want up there, whether it's a ski box, roof box, canoe, kayak, bikes, whatever you want. You can put that up there. Of course, you can put a hitch on the back as well. I did not check towing capacity. I apologize for that, but I know you can put a hitch and hitch racks and that kind of thing. Uh, towing capacity, you know what? I'll throw it up on screen what I saw on the GM website right there. So you have that as well. So cargo capacity, we're good. Let's talk, talk passenger capacity. Passenger capacity here. One thing I really like about the new Honda CRV is that Honda CRV opens 90 degrees with the doors. That can be good, although you don't always have a ton of space. These are very large doors, so although they don't open 90 degrees, you still have easy, easy access. Now this particular vehicle has tux mat systems in there, which is a lot like a WeatherTech, very full coverage everywhere. Overall, you can see I have great leg room in here. I also have excellent headroom. Let's pull you inside and show you some of the features in here now. So I jumped out just for a second so you can see kind of what we've got going on here. Nothing too crazy in here. You've got the bottle holders, you know, door open or the window and door. But as you come across the back seat here, there's a real mixed bag in this class of rear seat accommodations. Some manufacturers choose to save a bunch of money in the rear seat and it shows. GM's gone the other way. You have map pockets or, you know, pockets on the backs of both seats, not just one. You've also got vents in there. You've got two USB ports down there and a proper plug down on the bottom. Now, proper plug is not a household plug, but household style plug. And of course that can power a number of low power devices, charging a laptop, doing other things like that. Typical for the class in there. You also have an armrest, not everybody does that. And you have a 60-40 split. So 60 uh, side here, 40 side there. Not only is, are they full down for luggage, but you also have varying levels of recline, which is very good as well. Now let's jump in, flip the the camera and show you the other big thing that uh, you can't see right now. So for a very dark interior with dark colors, you may notice that this is actually pretty nice. So you have a massive panoramic roof. Now there are panoramic roofs in the class and uh, this is not the only way to get one, but this one is among the very best because when you have a panoramic roof, you want it to give lots of light to your rear passengers and your front passengers. And it's got massive panels, as you can sort of see there, uh, that just do a good job. And it basically makes up for the very dark interior in here. Usually you'd want to balance some of this dark with lighter materials. This doesn't really matter with this. If you don't want all that light pouring in, first of all, this is tinted. It does probably show a little brighter on camera than it does... Uh, uh, in actual person, but it is nice and light in here. Uh, you do have a powered uh, system here, which has a separate button, which we're going to show you in a second, that can close this up. And of course, the front side can open. So very, very good space in here. Oh, my watch is talking to me. Very, very good space in here. Uh, and again, you can see headroom is phenomenal. Even underneath where the headroom or where the um, sunroof is on the side, you have good headroom. But where I'm sitting is pretty square with the edge of the sunroof there. So tons of, headroom, tons of headroom. I'm about six feet tall. And again, just in case you want to see legroom there, this driver's seat is set up for me. So I'm a six footer sitting behind a six footer and there is tons of space in there. Now let's show you a lot of the little things that impressed me out front because that I think is what makes this vehicle special. All right, so we're outside the vehicle. It does have keyless entry, so you're gonna keep your key in your pocket. You're gonna to touch this little button here, which you can set to tap once to open all the doors or once to open just the driver's door. We have it uh, already unlocked, so we don't have to tap it at all. Let's start showing you some of the features. Okay, so first of all, seats in this class, class competitive. I would like them just a hair longer for me, but that's really nitpicking. That's not a huge deal. It's very, like I said, class competitive. Down here, you have the uh, power adjustments, power adjustments, and the lumbar support, which is what you want. And then you start having some little details that I think are pretty cool. A lot of vehicles with the power trunks don't have a simple quick adjust uh, button. So if you are in your garage and you open this up, to the max position, you can find that sometimes it'll come in contact with your garage door. What you can do is very simply go like that, tap the button there, and you can make sure that you open it to a lower setting. A lot of times you have to dig in through a menu to find that setting, or it's just not clear on how to do that. This one makes sense, so you can do that if you want and just adjust it. You also have the Bose audio system in here. Bose audio is a pretty good system. Chevrolet does it very well uh, with their systems, but let's dive in here. All right. First thing I'm gonna do is go wide angle. So it is gonna skew the view a little bit. Next thing I'm gonna do is fully start the car up. So we are running now and you can see you've got clear screens here. Chevrolet logo showed up there, Chevrolet logo showed up here. Let's start there in a second. We're gonna come back over here. 
In here, this is kind of the typical Chevy design type stuff. Nothing fancy in the fonts. You've got really, you know, kind of plain uh, temperature gauge and fuel gauge in there, but you've got a really good display screen in here that Chevrolet continues to update per model and uh, it just is very clear. There's a lot of good information in there. So you can see just from the, let's zoom right into it, just from the speed perspective, you've got your kilometers an hour. Uh, I'm gonna turn the fan speed down here because it's cold outside. We're gonna turn the rump roaster on as well. All right, so in this section here, you've got a speed uh, limit system there. That is tr primarily taken from the navigation system, but it will tell you the current um, speed limit of the vehicle or of the road that you're on and of course your kilometers per hour and there's a lot that you can go through in here so you know nine liters per hundred kilometers ignore fuel efficiency right now because we've been sitting there idling uh, there's your fuel range let's just zip through again a little bit more 93 percent oil life you got a good oil life monitor easy to read one thing i don't like about gm system is if you put it in kilometers it doesn't give you the option to do psi in fuel uh, or sorry in tire pressures but it is monitoring each one so um you can uh, see that for what it is in kilopascals, and you can switch it to PSI if you switch everything over to Imperial Systems. Air filter life is also a nice thing to have. It's 100%, it's totally fine. Uh, fuel efficiency, best is 6.3, worst is 13.8, or sorry, average 13.2, but that's, again, not average uh, for the, this has probably been reset fairly recently. Average speed, there we go, timer. Follow distance, this is the distance that you're following vehicles in front of you, and it can do that because it has a bunch of safety features. Let's look down here on the wheel to some of your safety features. There's your smart cruise control right over here, and um, you have lane keeping assist as well. So let's just uh, play with right here on the button. Let's go back, hit that main button. There's your gap adjustment. So this is your adjustment on your cruise control uh, because this can see the vehicle in front of you and you can decide how much space you want between you and the vehicle in front of you. So it can do that because it's looking at the front with some of its safety systems. So all of those safety systems are here, which is you know standard for the class, but sometimes they're harder to use or easier to use GM system. Uh, again, might be a little confusing the very first time you get this car, but they become very, very easy to use. They're not a confusing system. You see, I just turned on my heated steering wheel. The light is a bright orange, but it doesn't show on camera very well. It shows uh, perfectly in person there. I can see it without having to shield it like this but just the way the camera interacts with everything there let's go full wide angle here so we'll wait for that steering wheel to warm up i'll tell you right now i can already feel it just a little bit so very quick warming steering wheel uh, down here typical things for your lights you've got the automatic headlights but of course you also have the automatic high beam button right there so a lot of nice features in here i want to show you the backup camera in this car so we're going to go through this screen actually let's just show you the basics before we get to the backup camera gm is rumored to be canceling apple carplay and android auto in some of their future electric vehicles but it's a great feature to have and it is in this vehicle here for 2023 this equinox you've got a lot of good systems here so overall your radio system here somebody's been listening to some hockey news you have sirius satellite radio and AM, FM, you've got uh, various inputs, which we're going to show you in a second, uh, ways to add music. There's your phone system there. There's your navigation system here as well, which is excellent navigation uh, system, very easy to use. So some of them harder to use. So there's already you have that there, but let's throw it in reverse for a second and check out one of the best camera systems there is. So first of all, filming a screen, this screen is on a steep angle. From where I'm sitting, I don't actually see any glare. So it's it seems like it's angled for a reason. Cameras don't film screens well, so you're gonna see some glare in there and you're just gonna have to bear with me because uh, I wanna try to get the angle. I wanna try to film it so you can see it. But this is crystal clear. It's a very good uh, system. So you have your 360 camera here. So you have a front camera, two mirror wing cameras, and then a rear camera. And that's how you get this 360 view. And it's one of the better 360 cameras out there as far as uh, you can see the lines in the pavement here. It's hard to show you exactly, but that lines in the pavement are very precise. So what it is, is it's a digital stitching of the picture to make it look like this. Now we're gonna show you what I mean a little bit later. So you can switch that view there to uh, the front view and the rear view over here. So this is your backup camera or you can look out your front camera. So just so we understand how this is working, that front camera that gives you that down looking area at the concrete right there, it is digitally restitched to look upward and look out there without any distortion. And the key is without the distortion, they do a good job. So I've got it reversed there. You can also look straight down at the back camera, straight down at the front camera, which is sort of that 360 view. So let's just go back to over here. Then you can look at your side cameras. So again, your side cameras are looking down on the car here, but they're looking down at the rear of the vehicle. That's the dot at the rear and down at the front of the vehicle there. So if you are parallel parking or parking up against a curb or something like that, you can see exactly where that curb is. I love this about this car. Then you go into the trailer 
hitch mode. If there was a trailer hitch on this, uh, right at that point, you'd see the trailer hitch, and you can trailer hitch this up all by yourself. That's why it's a trailer hitch mode, a pretty good system there. And then if we go back to this system here, you have the system with lines, and the lines, of course, do follow roughly where you're turning, so they're fairly accurate for what they are uh, that way. And then you have the ability to have the lines, which give you roughly, you line them up with the parking lines and you're backing up, or you can have it line up with your trailer hitch as you're backing up, and same thing. It turns as well, so when you're helping hitch yourself, you can get that in line, which is pretty cool. And uh, then you can also turn that whole system off and get rid of the lines altogether. So very nice to have. And then the 360 camera there. So really good camera system here. And that's just really the beginning. Let's look at a couple little settings in here that you wouldn't expect for um, some of the other vehicles in here. So we've got, uh, let's go to uh, vehicle over here. We're going to go to collision detection system. So you have the forward collision system. This is a car that is capable of alerting you of a collision that's imminent and automatically braking. Front pedestrian detection, again, it can alert you and automatically brake. You can set those up to just alert and that kind of thing. But it basically helps you see pedestrian or helps look for pedestrians and it is capable of stopping. Now, do not test this system. It'll just drive straight towards a pedestrian. Uh, there are reasons these systems wouldn't work, including allowing you to keep control of the car. But if you're not paying attention, these are vehicles that are capable of doing things. And then adaptive cruise go notifier. Little things like if someone, if you're stopped at a light and you're kind of not paying attention, the person goes in front of you, uh, it will give you a notification like, hey, somebody's moved out in front of you, that kind of thing. So very good systems in here. We could show you a hundred more, but um, like I said, this is class competitive and beyond. It's very good stuff down here. Dual zone temperature control right down here, which is, you know, standard stuff that you would expect uh, on a higher end vehicle, which is this kind of feels like down here usb-c usb auxiliary input and there's a card slot in there uh, which you can use to access your information there's also a little 12 volt port there which you saw a place to put your phone down here the parking sensors front and rear so in addition to those 360 cameras you have beepers and sonar sensors that can look for things and, and warn you with a beep if you're approaching things the faster it beeps uh, closer you get and when it's a solid beep you're very very close so again you can see things through the cameras but you can also hear things if you're not uh you know, looking at the right part of the camera, it will warn you as well. There's an all-wheel drive button there as well, so you can activate that or leave it off if you want. And of course, the automatic transmission, electronic parking brake, cup holders, typical stuff. And then you also have more USB ports in here. And this is what I really like with GM, is not everybody allows you to use these USB ports for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. GM, they do. And of course, if you wanted to plug in and use your cord out here, uh, you can run your cord out and have your phone sit right there. So just nice little features. Let's look all the way up now. And you've got GM's OnStar, which is one of the best, if not the best, sort of telematic system out there. Works very, very well. You have your sunroof uh, switch here. A lot of manufacturers will put the shade for the sunroof in with the sunroof switch, and you can accidentally open that in the middle of the winter or do something silly with the ice and that kind of thing. This shade, once you close it, it creates an environment where it is exactly like uh, a closed vehicle. So we're going to flip the camera around and show you that right now. All right, with the camera flipped around, first of all, you can see that sunroof is directly over me. So when it opens, it's not going to open the full back to that full panel, but it will open partially. And I do have uh, sunlight and fresh air right over top of me, which works very well. But if we close just the panel here, when you close this, it feels like a regular car. It feels like there is absolutely uh, no sunroof at all. So if you don't like having that sunroof open all the time, if you're not a sunroof person like myself, I've got the hair for a sunroof, uh, you can close it up and it feels like a completely normal car. So we're going to keep that open because it's impressive, uh, but that's good. So let's talk driving position here. The seat is very good. You're well placed. You sit a little low in the car, but of course you can adjust that with the seat height. And as you can see, I've got tons of headroom in here for a six footer. Like I mentioned, the seat just a smidgen short, which is again, par for the course in this class. If you had a full size pickup truck, the seats are just a little bit larger. It is not uncomfortable in here, so I don't want to overplay that. Um, but you know, bigger seats are usually a little bit better. This one is very class competitive. I think if you're comfortable in anything in this class, you'll be comfortable in this as well. So don't overplay that. Tilt telescopic steering wheel, which gets you uh, nice and comfortable. And visibility is actually pretty good. Where you have a little bit of lack of visibility is the same with everything in the class. You've got the, oops, let's go this way. You've got the headrests behind you uh, there and a little bit of a less, uh, I don't know how to show you, but less rear window. But again, you have those 360 cameras. So when you're parking this car between the 360 camera, that is super clear. And with those beepers, you really are protected in that environment. And that's the thing with this car. GM, Ford, Chrysler, they always sell vehicles in decent volumes, in part because if you're in a smaller town, which is a lot of North America, 
GM, Chrysler, and Ford are in many cases, if not the only, but certainly the largest dealers in your town. Uh, so they continue to sell vehicles just because that's what's available. But in this particular model, you get a lot of features that are both easy to use, including the screen and software and the screen, very, very good, that's easy to use, but it also gives you a lot of features in there and features that make a difference to people. So safety features are all here, um, you know, the overall usage of features, very easy to work, and that's a really key piece. Even like I said, that, that lifting that tailgate to that three-quarter setting, you get in your garage, you flick that switch, and you can open that garage for the power tailgate while sitting in the vehicle in a lowered garage, or you get to the airport, maybe there's an under, ground garage somewhere uh, you can hit that button and uh, at three quarter height and know that you're not going to hit stuff so just smart easy to use controls the only fault to this car is some of the pieces are a little plasticky everywhere you're going to touch is going to be a little softer i don't think people touch those hard plastics you know including on some on the dash nobody's walking around banging their fingernails against your dash but on other cars in the class sometimes you have a little bit more rubbery feel a little bit more leathery feel but overall really not much to complain about because the surfaces you actually touch are all very good. This car impressed me more than I thought. Let's finish up with final thoughts. So GM has faced criticism in the past for not creating class competitive vehicles. They're behind in their features or behind in their value. And with this vehicle, none of that applies. You can say the styling on one vehicle is better than another. Maybe this is your style, maybe it's not your style, but who is this car for? anybody looking for a vehicle in this class. In that small SUV class, you now have to consider, you know, even if you're an import person, you have to consider a lot of these small crossovers because these really are very competitive and they feel a little bit more European, a little bit more Japanese. You've got features like the oversized panoramic roof, which you don't get in every vehicle and certainly not that big. You've got features like a 360 camera, but not just a 360 camera, which was launched with Nissan and Infiniti. You've got a really clear one with tons of adjustments so you can really park this car in any situation, in any problem. And I think that's an important feature on this car because a lot of people are moving to this vehicle up. They're moving from a compact car or they're moving from a too small SUV or something else. And anytime you buy a new vehicle anyways, you're gonna have to learn the dimensions. So parking this vehicle, regardless of what you're used to driving, is very easy. Things like the little switch for the trunk, I pointed out a couple times, but those are the features that matter. Your safety systems in here are not only existing, which is pretty much standard for the class, but they're easy to use, easy to adapt. If you want things to do capable of automatic braking, it can do that. If you want it to just alert you and not automatic brake, it can do that and the settings are easy to find. So again, I really like the uh, GM's uh, stereo system or infotainment system, I should say. You've got things like the satellite radio, you've got things like the audio inputs from Bluetooth and other systems. You also have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And again, it's easy to use, it's quick to respond, and it's a clear screen, including satellite radio in there. OnStar is one of the best systems out there. The value in this car, is off the charts. It really is much more impressive than even I expected it to be. And I saw the spec sheet and that's the thing. The spec sheet doesn't tell the whole story. So if you wanna see this vehicle in person, swing on down to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Canada's huggable car dealer, where you can compare it with the same salesperson who cares about your needs and doesn't care which brand you buy. They can give you equal numbers so you know you're comparing apples to apples and you can decide if this vehicle is great for you or if one of its other competitors is best for you. If you have questions about this car and I haven't answered them in this video, make sure you let me know in the comments below. And if you have experience with this car, tell me what you like about it. Tell me the, uh, you know, how your ownership experiences was. And we'll continue to build a little database of information. Thanks everybody for watching.